Hello everyone out there in YouTube land, internet land, wherever you're at, wherever you're floating in the atmosphere. Um, beautiful autumn day, the autumn weather is really setting in now, and I'm home and cozy in my sweater. And I thought I'd do a, 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 a video on how to clean vinyl records that you buy at the thrift stores. Um, thrift store uh, record shopping is very fun because you get an eclectic uh, a wide variety of music and um, very cheaply too except some of these thrift stores are really starting to mark the vinyl up but um, I had tremendous success at Goodwill and other places um, which is cool. I was at Goodwill recently I was going to buy just one album and Lord and behold, as I was just getting ready to walk to the cashier, one of the employees rolled a card out um, of, uh, that had four stacks of albums. So I was the first one to go through them and pick out all the good stuff. And there was a lot of good stuff. You know, a, a, a classic jazz, uh, uh, folk, rock, and... Uh, few other things. Uh, so I end up buying about 30 albums. So um, I have to thank Vicki Carr live at the Greek Theater because that was the album I was only going to buy before uh, they rolled that out. If I had left a, a moment sooner, um, I would have uh, uh, missed out on that. So anyway, you bring home a stack of records from the thrift stores, you know, you, you, you good scores and all that. Here's my stack here. And um, instead of just playing them, they all need to be clean, thoroughly clean, to really get down into the grooves of all the dust and dirt and contaminants that uh, had settled into the records. And uh, uh, they need a thorough cleaning because uh, they'll make they'll make them sound a lot better. And if you play a dirty record, uh, it'll uh, deteriorate your stylus. So it also will, you know, prolong the life of the stylus. And I'm going to present a um, a form a homemade vinyl cleaning formula that's been on the net for a while and a, a, a sink cleaning method. Uh, also, uh, there's a number of videos on, the, um, on this method I'm going to show you, but I decided to make my own. Um, we're going to clean a lot of vinyl very quickly. Uh, we're going to we set this up like a car wash, okay? So you go in, um, you know, they may vacuum and, and, and then your car goes through the wash and the drying process. So uh, I'm going to set this up this way. Um, I'm only by myself. I can't hire a crew to help me out. So I have to move the camera. And I'm going to do that right now to um, um, show you. Also, let me make clear, uh, this method does not include new vinyl that you go out, you know, a new artist you like and you want to get their work on vinyl. In this case, this is uh, Aurora's debut album, came out about a year and a half ago. By the way, promotion, this album's very, very good. If you like kind of electronic type of techno sound, uh, but has good melodies and hooks, this is, this is a very good album. Um, gatefold. Okay. And, uh, I, I'm going to discuss how to <coughs> do a light cleaning on these, uh, uh, on the new vinyl you, you buy at uh, um, the record stores that's 180 gram um, so, because they don't require the detailed cleaning, just a very light cleaning to remove any contaminants that uh, was the, that gathered on the vinyl during the pressing. and. Um, so I, we're going to start on the video by um, me moving the camera to where you pull the car in to start the process, okay? Uh, I appreciate your patience. So. 
Okay, so this is the point of entry for the car wash. These are the cars. Very cool. Cool. And so uh, the attendants will, this is the way I work it. And this is to clean a lot of vinyl very quickly. Sort of like an assembly line setup. We got uh, Deep Purple, History of the Hollies, and Roberta Flack and Donnie Hathaway. So we're going to set up this way. We're going to pull each album out here. The side one will go flat down on this terry cloth. Then you put that the uh, album cover down. Same thing with the Roberta Flack album. Side one flat down. Then you take her album and put that down. And we got the best, The History of the Hollies, which is a double album. Uh, album one, side one. Uh, album two, side, side one, side actually three down. Okay. So, Deep Purple, their album's at the bottom, so th their album cover will be at the bottom. Roberta Flack, Donny Hathaway is second, Holly second. That way, once they're clean and you go put them back in the um, uh, the cover, you could do it quickly because it's a, it's in order. Okay, you did not shuffle the deck, so you you know you don't have the Hollies and you're digging through 15 albums of. Uh, covers to find a holly. It all matches up. Okay. Um, before I show you the cleaning process, a few other things you can do to um, um, uh, prevent dust from building up so much on your records and to eliminate a little bit of that moldy smell that's in the album cover. Uh, so we're gonna I'm gonna move the camera back and give you a, a, a quick demonstration of what to do with the inner sleeve. Okay. For the deep purple album, you don't need to uh, see my face for this one here. Uh, you're going to pull the inner sleeve out, and darn it, there's no inner sleeve to that one. So I'm going over here and, and get one. Okay. So deep purple, we pull the inner sleeve out. You take that inner sleeve and kind of turn upside down and do one of these. Blow on it to remove any dust. Then you're going to get a can of Static Guard and only use this brand because it has a special formula to uh, for for to repel dust for vinyl records in their sleeve here. So you're going to uh, use a can of this stuff, and you're just going to spray very quickly. Three shots on the side, middle, and on the other side. This stuff dries very quickly, so you want to do one of these to really speed up the drying process. It only takes a, a, a few seconds to dry, okay? Um, also, you're going to take the album cover as well. And spray Scotch Guard into that. Let it dry. And to help with the moldy smell, this, this stuff is sold at the dollar store, and I like the the uh, the linen one, one there because it doesn't have any uh, um, um, any uh, scent smell like pine. Or cherry, 
it just has like a nice mm, linen smell. Um, so you're gonna spray a little bit of that in, in, in there in the album cover and if you want to go to a little bit of extreme you'll get a toothpick uh, cut it a bit in half and insert it here that way to kind of open the album cover if you want to let it air out for 24 hours okay so that's how you uh, fix the album cover the inside the the inner sleeve um, to um, repel any dust in the future. Every time I play album I get a little bit of the static guard and, and uh, uh, spray it in there. Okay. Now our ingredients. You get a squirt bottle, a dollar store squirt bottle. You get a um, thing of, of clear Dawn. I like to use clear because there's no um, um, artificial col co uh, not color, yeah, coloring. And 91 Parasot, whatever they call this, alcohol. Use 91. It's a little bit more, but uh, it, it's, it's better. Using, you fill the bottle of water with distilled water about um, three quarters of distilled water and uh, one quarter of the alcohol. And I usually put a couple of drops of the Dawn in there. Okay. So, one other thing you need, most important. This is called a Scotch Bright MP3 multi, multiple purpose sponge. Only use this kind. It's sold at your uh, uh, grocery store in the cleaning section here. It has a like a, a sandpaper uh, surface here. We're not going to use that at all. But we're just going to, you see, the sponge is very thick. And that, what's so cool is when you put put the sponge on the record when it's all wet, it kind of sucks in, okay? Um, only use this kind. There's a other brand, uh, uh, there's another kind with the uh, sandpaper and a sponge, but it's very thin. So it is the Scotch Bright MP3 multi purpose sponge. So we're going to clean our first record and I see the cats trying to interfere with my production here. Get out. Get out of the set. <laughs> um, I'm going to move the camera closer to the sink so you can um, see more in detail when I actually do a cleaning. Okay, we're running 13 minutes and something, so we're about on time. Okay, so we got to view the sink. So the car wash, we got the entry and the setting up the records. There's the records right there. The cleaning stuff, I already got the stuff, the uh, bottle mixed and the sink. So, I probably won't clean all four of these records, just going to do one uh, uh, to keep the video shorter. So, it, this is really cool here. This Holly album. It's like a, 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 the history of the Hollies from 1963 recordings up to the early Late 60s, early 70s, when they start having hits. Okay, so what you do is take take your formula, about three squirts on each side, and I just like to add a drop of Dawn. You know it's in the formula on each side because we're going to really scrub this record 
um, to get deep into the grooves to eliminate all dust static so you water and this um, sprout here is nice because it does this but for wrench thing it's beautiful because it has uh, this flow also so we want the temperature to be lukewarm water so we're getting that set just do one of these and we're at, we're we're cleaning the record you want to go in in this direction here um, clockwise and I usually do about 12 rotations and this sponge kind of sucks on to the record so you want to do about 12 good rotations really get into the grooves on the other side the same thing you're so you're really really uh, deep into the grooves and do that um, so this is so cool then the rest rinsing process make sure you, your water's lukewarm not um, hot and we give a thorough rinsing and you can see the the flow here it gets it rinses very 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 quickly okay then you do one of these to start the rinsing process because there'll be a lot of water that will kind of come down. Then I have a really cool device right here. If you can find something like this, this is uh, something that's used in an office. Uh, let me make sure you can see it. There, there we go. One of these, I don't know what you call this, but um, so once it's completely dry, not completely dry, gets done rinsing, I meant to say, and you do, you, you do this. Then you put it in what I call the rack. And you want to be careful that you don't rub it against the metal then you do your next record you do your next record when you get about three or four of them you, you have a terry cloth that's laid uh, on the table there on the um there we are and i use a terry cloths So, you, you know, say I got four records cleaned. This is one, the one I just cleaned. This is one of them. Um, you lay the terry cloth this way. And you want to use a large one, not a small one. Then you do, you got like three records laid across there. Then you fold it over to cover all the records and you press down you know here's here's the record right there so you cover all the records uh, you press down you know give it a good pat and let the terry cloth absorb the water now, once you do that, all the water is not off of it. So I have another terry cloth, which I uh, do a final wipe down, like that. Go on the other side. Give it about um, about eight, you know, rotations, 
and then you look at it for a minute see if there's still water if there is you do one of these and just do another um, after that you take the vinyl and you go up and down up and down about 12 times to completely dry it out uh, it helps if you have like two of these because once an album's gone through the washing and drying process then if you have another one of these which I don't I have to look around the thrift store and buy one you can put the album in there and uh, it'll be ready to put back to its sleeves um, now you can do the your choice um, the, the sleeves, the inner sleeves, the, the, the spraying of the static guard and uh, air scent um, first before you start your process of cleaning or last. But you, you'll have your uh, vinyl records ready to put back in the sleeve once you uh, uh, decontaminate the sleeve. So you can see I got kind of car wash process going on. Entry, you know, the vacuuming. <laughs> the washing, the drying process. Also, if you're gonna clean a lot of records, it may be helpful to have on hand two or three of these cloths um, ready because after uh, so many cleaning, they get really damp and lose their uh, absorbing uh, um, um, uh, ability. Uh, so uh, that's, it in a nutshell on how I clean my thrift store vinyl records. Now, I know, let me move the camera back and we can wrap this up. Okay, I know some people uh, will take issue. Oh, you, you know, you're using alcohol because alcohol is not good for vinyl. Yeah, it's not good if you put alcohol on on vinyl and keep it on there and keep using it uh, without the rinsing. You know, you're only going to use it once, you know. Um, or this is just not a good method, you should use that or this, you know. If you disagree with me, you know, you can put your comment, that's, that's cool, that's fine. Uh, if you're weary of using this method, that's fine. But we're talking about thrift store vinyl that needs a thorough cleaning one time and you're good to go okay now for new vinyl uh, new releases uh, that's very popular too uh, very much pricier um, you take great care with those records as, uh, as I showed you with the uh, Aurora album oh that's a, such a great cover um, for that, you get it home before you play it because in the pressing of the album and putting it in the sleeves and all that, it does get some uh, contaminants on it. Oh, where's my little other cloth? Sometimes uh, they don't go. But anyway, for those records, you just want to uh, do one spray on each side of the record and use a static guard cloth to wipe it down. Wipe it down. And you may want to do the uh, uh, Scotch Guard cleaning um, of the, uh, not cleaning, spraying of the inner jacket as well. And you're good to go on that. Um, this was a record I purchased at the. Um, a record store the the other day and it was in the dollar bin and this is really 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 cool and you can see the names on there on the um, wine cot w-y-n-o-c-o-t-e which was a uh, so, I can't pronounce the word it was part of uh, uh, Cameo Records and Parkway. Uh, this was like a budget line. They put a lot of compilations together, and this was in mono. And I thought it was really cool, the, the artwork and everything, very retro vibe. And this was a collection of artists who were like 
you know, whose music appeared to the teens of the time. Uh, this is a 1964 issue, so I saw this record, I thought, oh, this is very cool. You know, very period, and the music's cool also. Um, and I looked at the vinyl, it was filthy, absolutely filthy, but it had no, uh, no marks, no scratch or anything. Oh, I should, don't handle records by, by, by the, um, um, just on the edges, okay? I was breaking the rule there. I had to catch myself. But you can see how clean it is. Look, just look, uh, you can see the lights reflecting from it. And so, you know, you clean it up and it just comes to life. So it's very, 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 very important that you clean records. Now, a friend was telling me that some labels in the 50s, if you use this method cleaning, the um, particularly Capital and Corel, 1950s release, and this is uh, Frank Sinatra's In the We Small Hours. He said if you use that method, it'll um, bleed the, some of the the coloring of the, the, the label here. Uh, so I'm going to research that a little further, but if you have those records, don't uh, clean those using this method, okay? Because I don't want to mislead you and have you end up ruining your records. Uh, I have seen this device, this homemade device, where two uh, people took two uh, side, two jar, top of the jars, you know, screw on, and got some uh, rubbery uh, um, substance um, and drilled holes and put the rubbery substance and uh, uh, the jar sides on both sides with a screw that isolate the the um, the label from the water and you can look on YouTube to look for that too um, anyway thrift store record collecting is very 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 fun and uh, I've really uh, expanded my uh, album collection by thrift store record. I also buy new vinyl too. That's a very expensive proposition. But if there's a new artist I really like, um, I don't um, get their music through downloading or listen to it on um, Spotify uh, or, or buy MP3s. Uh, I actually go to by the uh, record itself and you usually get a download card which is cool or sometimes a copy of the music on CD um, so I, I just will in this video to sh uh, just to show you some of my recent thrift store finds I appreciate y'all watching I'm gonna move it over here I don't want to get anything wet uh, just the camera just a little bit we're good Let's see you put it up a little higher I got a higher production crew just a little higher okay um, with buying thrift store records it has really broaden my horizon as a music listener because you get a very eclectic uh, um, uh, range of music in all kinds of genres and so I just will show you some of the albums I purchased recently uh, the best of uh, Vicky Carr very cool I have a number of her albums and I discovered her as a great vocalist uh, Jody Miller, who was uh, very popular in the uh, country field in the late 60s, early 70s, uh, very attractive woman, great voice, so happy to get that. These are all, play I don't buy any albums that's not playable, if they're all scratched up, uh, unless there's a really cool album cover that's in good condition, 
but with a scratch up record, uh, then I'll buy it. But if they're scratch up, non playable, I don't buy it. Uh, uh, Randy Newman, uh, Trouble in Paradise, 1983 release. Flamingo guitarist Carlos Montaña, if I pronounce that right. Another uh, instrumental guitarist that 